Hi wonderful people at the internet, I'm back and I'm very sorry for my absence from the channel over the last few months. I've, well, I've not really got an excuse but I can tell you that I'm back now and do plan to start uploading regularly again and we're going to be kicking that off with a book review that I've been promising for those um, two months and not being get done. Sorry about that. Um, it's um, the fourth installation of the Discworld series, more by Terry Pratchett, so without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so Mort. Mort is the point in the Discworld series where people often say, this is where it gets good, this is where you should start this series, and I've been saying, since I started reading the series chronologically, that I don't agree with that mindset and think you should start with the first book, although a lot, although that's me coming from my experience of knowing how good Discworld can be before going back in the series, because the first book was not as good as some of the, the later books, and maybe it wasn't an accurate representation of the series as a whole, I still think if you're willing to trust in the fact that it's going to get really, really good pretty darn fast, that you can, you know, start with that and you get to see the world develop, you get to see all the stories intertwine, and I think overall it becomes a more satisfying thing than maybe popping yourself in like I did later on in the series. So that's my that's my two cents, but let's actually talk about the book and not the series as a whole. Mort is the first in the death sub series of the series, and it's about Mort who is a farm boy who, for a sequence of events, becomes Death's apprentice, and it's about the mishaps that occur as he does a job that a mortal is not meant to do. Um, this video is going to be full spoilers for the book, just because um, to get into some of my things that I really liked and some of the things that I didn't like as much, I'm going to have to go into quite a bit of detail, otherwise it will sound really vague and I won't be able to talk about it enough. So if you haven't read more, if you're going to read more in the future, I know some of my viewers are, please click off now, because I feel like you'll get a, a bit more from this book um, being surprised by what happens later on in the book. Okay, so if you stood around, let's get into spoilers. So. What did I like about Mort? So we've got Andrew Garfield on his good side. Um, we'll start with the, the big cheese and we'll, then we'll get into the smaller things. The highlight of Mort for me was Death. Not who isn't the main character of this book, but he is the most interesting character of this book. And he has a, uh, appeared in the previous three books, but this is when he gets a real spotlight. So this is about the Grim Reaper of the Discworld. And, well no, it's not about the Grim Reaper of the Discworld, but he is one of the main characters of the story, and he's kind of the character that lets the entire story happen. To summarise his character arc throughout this story, um, Death is feeling lonely, because being the Grim Reaper is a lonely job. You've been there from the beginning of time, and you know that you're going to be there at the end of time, and around you, you're just solitary, and so this is the story of that kind of getting to him, him hiring an apprentice and then you know, taking advantage of that situation to take days off, to go on holidays, to get a job that isn't being the Grim Reaper. And these were definitely- Do you see what I did there? Definitely. Like, like, like death? Definitely? highlights of the book for me and the strongest points of the book as well because this book actually has quite a lot of weak points despite what a lot of people say about it. Um, that some of the scenes that I just loved was when Death was working in a cafe and it, you know he's like whirling around like a, like a whirlwind and he's feeding cats and just feeling happy about himself and one thing that does occur in this is that Death, his speech is always written as like capital letters with no speech marks but as he's working in there, his speech t starts to become uh, in encapsulated in, in quotation marks, and so he slowly starts to become human, and it's really sweet to see him be happy and experience happiness for the first time. And there are other things like seeing him be sad at his job, even from the, from the start of the book, one of the really poignant scenes is that he has to go and herald some kittens that have been drowned in a barrel full of water into the afterlife and you see how that affects him and it's just so well written, really good execution of an idea of like the concept of what would it be like to be the Grim Reaper really and so it's just wonderful, although that's not the only good thing about this book. There's, I've got my notes down here, so that's why I'm looking down here. There's some really cool sequences throughout this book, as there should be, because this is like a quite a heavy kind of fantasy sort of thing. You know, you've got different dimensions where the Grim Reaper li lives. You've got his actual job, which is just something you don't see much in fiction. And some of my favorite sequences in this book were, aside from death, you know, 
taking part in pleasures of the flesh, as he calls them, there's when Mort goes out on the duty, when he goes to herald souls into the other life, and you get to see these different attitudes to passing on that he gets from different people. Like, throughout the story, he heralds on a monk from a temple, um, there's a, there's a witch that he heralds on, and a monarch as well. And you see how each of them react differently, and how each of them go into the afterlife in different ways, which is really interesting, and it makes for really good reading. Uh, there are some quite... You know, there, there, there are parts of this book that aren't very good, but these bits, along with the death bits, just really make this book worth reading, and make me understand why people would say, this, this is where you should start Discworld, because this shows some of the best that Terry Pratchett can be, perhaps not as consistently as his latest stuff, but this is glimmers, pretty big glimmers, like beacons, uh, uh, throughout certain sequences where it's like, yeah, this guy knows what he's doing, this is going to be a series worth sinking your teeth into. Uh, there are some also really cool descriptions, like Pratchetty descriptions throughout the book. One that stuck with me was of the Listener's Temple, and there are some people in this story who call themselves the Listeners, they're monks, and they believe that the sound that started the whole universe, the Big Bang, can still be heard today if you listen hard enough, and so they devote their entire life to listening, to try and dismantle the sounds of the world so they find the, the word or the sound that started the universe. And there was a description of their temple and how it's like one big reverse sound vacuum or something like that, how it's kind of like a cochlea that it brings sound in so that it can hear it, and the description's about two pages long and it's sprinkled in with humour as Terry Pratchett stuff always is, and just really interesting to read. It's like sometimes in books description can be a bit heavy going, it's like yeah cool but get on with the action, but here it's interesting because it's such a cool idea. Some of the humour in the earlier books is quite slapstick centred or situational centred, whereas in this some of the humour comes from kind of biting remarks at the world as a whole, and just general humour in kind of how things are presented, and so it's, I feel like this is one of the points where the humour becomes a lot more practity than perhaps before, although there was a lot of this in Equal Rights as well. I, I think that Equal Rights is kind of the stage where the books start to get really good, but, you know, people disagree with me, but that's that's how, where I stand on that. And before I get onto the negatives, I do want to say that um, all of the characters were quite good in this, but I also really like Albert, who is the only character from the book that actually kind of sticks around for later books. Um, Albert is Death's manservant, and he um, used to be a really powerful wizard, and summoned himself into Death's realm to escape dying, and now he just works for Death, and he's... He's just a fun character, and especially in The Hogfather later on, he's really funny, and I like seeing him begin being in the books here. But now we're going to get on to negative things, of which there's actually more than I've had for a Discworld book so far, and that might be because I'm more critical of this, because it's meant to be, like, a really good one, and I feel like it's not as good as people say it is, although it's still really good, and it has some really good moments, as I said, like, this book is a book of moments, there are moments in this book where it's just, ah, oh, so good, but it's the moments between the moments that were, that is where the book kind of lacks. So we'll stick Mr. Garfield Bear and talk about what I didn't like so much. So one of the reasons I didn't upload for two months was because I was reading this book and hadn't finished this book for the two months, because the middle is really quite slow, there's a lot of introducing the factors that need to be there for the climax, so there's a lot of characters talking about what's going on, and it kind of gets slow. The pace does drop from like the rush at the beginning of Mort getting whisked away by death and then doing the jobs, then the action at the end where Mort has to reconcile his actions that have literally ruined reality. So in the middle, it's the calm before the storm, and it does drag on a bit, and it wasn't brilliant, and it did make reading it a bit of a slog at times. I didn't feel myself drawn to pick it up, if that makes sense. Also, character inconsistencies were a bit of a problem. Um, they were minor, but I feel some of the uh, characters that weren't Death or Albert would switch and change a bit, and even Albert had a bit of a moment where I was like, huh, that's not really how he'd be. Uh, the characters would just switch for the for the sake of a joke, if that makes sense, and that was one of my problems. Well, that's the, the kind of sum of the problem in here. Some of the characters would be inconsistent for the sake of a bit of a laugh, and I don't mind that. But I think in the later books it's handled better where characters are consistent and still there are lots of funny situations. And you might disagree with me like uh, about that and I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments because since I'm having a bit of a controversial opinion here, 
I'd like to hear what you have to say, see um, see different opinions, because I'm probably wrong. Uh, I, I mean, I'm usually wrong about things. I mean, I don't like Nightmare Before Christmas. I don't like Frankenstein. So, you know, I, I, I'm probably not the most reliable person to be talking about good media, because I don't like a lot of what people consider good media. Although, speaking of Frankenstein, I'm going to reread that soon to see if my mind has changed, because I do feel like it's a bit... A, a bit unorthodox for me to say I don't like Frankenstein, so I'm going to give it another shot just because I feel like maybe I didn't read it at the right time. But I digress massively there. But that that's the main two issues of the thing, the pacing and some of the character inc inconsistencies. But this was actually enough to bring this book down for me. With previous thing, with previous Discord reviews, I would say, ah, you know, I can forgive these fools because this is like really good. And this was really good, but I think because some of the moments were so good, where it was where some of the stuff wasn't up to that standard, it kind of felt more obvious where things were good and where things were bad. You know, because as I said, there are some really good moments in this. But that is those are my thoughts on war. What would I give this? I'd give this a four stars, which kind of pains me because I've given every, every other Discord book so far a five stars, I believe. But I feel like this one um, just wasn't as good as I remembered it being because this was a reread for my chronological order. And maybe that's the thing that's going to occur again. Maybe the books that I reread will be less good on a reread because you notice more things knowing where the story is going and things like that. I don't know. But those are my thoughts and more. I'd love to hear what all my Discworld fans think about what I've just said and I will get to you all soon. Um, but probably a review of Breach of Peace by Daniel Green because it's a small book and I know I make promises like this quite a lot and it doesn't happen, but it is a small book and so I should, should, should have it done by Sunday so I could talk to you all about it. So thanks for watching and have a good one. Bye.